Alright guys, well thanks for joining us and welcome to today's basic training. Um, you guys, some of you guys have already done this, correct? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to try and tailor this for someone that's just seen it the first time and for you guys more on how to train this yourselves. Okay? So there's really six parts to our business. There's not too much else that fits outside this box. So if we can master these six points and take everyone through these steps in order, we're going to be able to run and duplicate a successful business. Okay, so the first one is we come in, we need to shape our why, we need to build our list, start inviting, bringing people to a presentation, follow up accordingly and get those that want to start started, and then plug them into a system, and then everyone repeats the same training. Okay, so that's how simple this really is. Um, so it is basic, but you know, the human mind does like to waver and, and complicate things. Okay, so number one, coming into a business, any business in the world, you need to know why you're doing what you do. Okay, so the complicated part is with this business is, there's really two sides to our business. There's the opportunity side, and there's the product side. So we really need a why that we can share to the people we're talking to for both, for both angles. Make sense? Yeah. So we need a why for select customers that just want to use the products, and we also need a why for independent representatives that want to become, they want to earn some extra income, they want to be financially free, all the above. So when shaping our why for a select customer, we need to really dig into universal frustrations. Okay, so we're digging into universal frustrations for customers and reps, because that's what we do as a business. All businesses that thrive, all they're doing is providing a solution to frustrations and problems. So we want to dig into that, and hopefully you guys have some frustrations that you can share. Okay, so the biggest thing to share in your why is point one, is frustrations, and you probably can't read that there, but frustrations or where you were. Okay, the second part is what you saw with the products and what now. So this is sort of a three part process of sharing your why to someone. Now, the why is so important because it's like your icebreaker. If you're just selling supplements, you're gonna get a lot of resistance. If you're just selling business opportunity, you're gonna get a lot of resistance. But if you're selling the why, the solution to the problem, you're gonna get a lot of open ears and a lot of interest, make sense? Yeah. And it's gonna show your passion, share your values, your enthusiasm, and this is what people buy into. They're actually buying into you and your story, your why, more than a product. Because there's a million products we could buy on the shelves, but they're gonna start buying from you because of this, okay? so when, in, when I'm talking to people about the products, I'm gonna talk about my frustration. So I'm gonna say, look, I got involved with this health company um, because you know, get, you know, working in the fitness industry, start trying to stay in shape, I was sacrificing my health to look a certain way. I was always tired, didn't sleep at night, had a lot of health problems, a lot of headaches, um, all the above, um, just to look a certain way. What I saw was a solution to this because I could get all the nutrition and there's something that could cleanse my body and keep it clean, healthy and nourished while still cutting. And now I'm in the best shape of my life, I feel great, and I'm on top of my game, and I'm seeing how these products are changing other people's lives, from elite athletes through to the elderly, um, absolutely everyone. So that's why I'm passionate about this. I believe these products can help 95% of the world's problems. I believe they're all nutrition related, and we can get people's bodies back in balance, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. So that's gonna be much better in to, in, to really get them into a presentation than, hey, I've got these supplements, you wanna come and see what they're about? Uh, no thanks, not another supplement, you know, not another, you know, Kool-Aid or what are you selling now, okay? So two polar opposites. So you guys see how effective a why can be at getting, A, sharing your passion and enthusiasm, sharing the value, problem solution, and breaking the ice. Yeah. Okay, so obviously I'm not going to share that to someone that's purely just business because they don't want to hear about it, you know, they're not interested in that, they're interested in financial freedom. Okay, so I'm going to have a different why for reps, but it's going to be in the same three parts. So I'm going to talk about frustrations, what I saw, where I am now. And everyone's is going to be different. That's why this is very unique and I can't script yours for you. You're going to have your own personal story and it's unique and it's your story is going to work, not my story. And it's the same in the business. So my why is I got involved in this business because I'd been through 14 different jobs in a small space of time and I failed miserably, I was dead broke, I was angry at the world, I had no opportunity, I said all those victim thoughts that I wasn't rich, I didn't have rich parents so I could never be successful. That's what I believe. What I saw was an opportunity that was being backed by every financial expert in the world and I saw an opportunity to become financially free with a very little investment, with a small investment. And today, 
Um, you know, I live a life I only I really dreamt of. I work with my best friends. Um, I live in, in a beautiful place. Money's not an issue for me. I get to travel and make a global impact. And now I'm all about giving back and helping other people make the same shift I have. So we should chat about this business. That would be a great example of sharing a good why and getting them into the presentation. Okay, and even, even before the presentation, I'm not just gonna show up and present you and sell. I'm gonna share my why. Okay, so most business presentations I do, I'll share both because I think most people today are interested in health and money. They're two universal problems that affect nearly everyone and two things people want to get better at and enhance. So I actually share both sides of those whys when I present to someone. And that's probably the most important part of the presentation. The slides aren't that important. You can, you know, make various mistakes. You can even skip slides, you know. You'll still be able to get the job done if you really work this why effectively. So you guys role as you develop and have your own whys, um, you need to be able to guide your new people through this and creating their why with this three-part system. Make sense? Yeah. So it's very easy to do once you've seen it in this format um, and that's going to be part of your mentoring coaching role and just guiding people through the steps and um, as you'll get very advanced, your frustrations, your intuition, so if I know someone's struggling with their weight, I'm going to talk about my frustrations with my weight. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more tailored um, and really connect with the person. Make sense? So that's really simple. Once we've got that done, which should only take us sort of 15, 20 minutes for someone, just a bit of communication, asking the right questions, we go on to build our list. Now in this business, we have something for everyone. We've got three types of people in this business. We've got A, Bs, and Cs. Okay, so the A's are big business builders. They're the entrepreneurial minded ones that want to be successful. They follow, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, Harv Eker, all these multi, multi millionaires endorsing the industry. They want to be financially free. They want to commit to a system. They want to commit two to four years <laughs> at having a shot at financial freedom. The B's are sort of in between. They don't, they, yeah, they want to be a customer, which is a C. The C's the customer, but they want a little bit more. They want to make a little bit of money. This is obviously in our industry, great for a lot of health professionals, PTs, but even you know a whole industry of like your Avon's Mary Kay's was all built on Bs. People just wanting to earn a couple of thousand dollars a month referring a product they already referred and loved. Makes sense to make some money out of it. This is how money circulates and the world goes around. So we've got something for them. And then we've also got, I believe every single person I know is a C, because I believe the power of these products alkalizing the blood, nourishing it, clearing the digestive system and helping people break down their food is gonna change everyone's life. Doesn't matter if they're the world champion athlete right now or whether they're 55, tired, sick, overweight. I believe it's gonna help them. So in my mind, everyone goes onto my list as at least a C. And I would categorize your list. And the reason it's, so, it's very efficient in categorizing the person is you're actually, you're not selling. Okay, you're selling to their needs, what you believe their needs are, or their desires. And it's a much different ball game if you can start building a list and inviting in terms of their interest. So I would start building a list, you know, start with your top 50 to start with, um, but you want to get a list of hundreds. If you get into online and autoresponding, you'll end up building a list of thousands. If you want to treat this like a professional business and you want to be a big business builder, you're just going to constantly be building your list and constantly adding to it, and you'll just categorize it accordingly. And the great thing is, be flexible, because you might go into a meeting thinking they're gonna be a B, but they'll have more interest in the A. Or they'll have more interest in just being a customer. That's cool too. Okay, we're not here to big beg and convince anyone to do anything they don't wanna do. We're just here to show people and educate people on our opportunities, and they can make the, an educated decision for themselves and what suits them with their lifestyle. Okay, you guys with me so far, makes sense? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, so it's, it's very clear, very quick. <coughs> then we go into our invite. So we invite accordingly. So that's why I don't really do generic scripts because um, it needs to be a slightly different invite for each type. And your knowing the person will slightly vary and mold that invite to that person. The number one thing to think about with your invite, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? At the end of the day, this is the main thing everyone's worried about especially if people are sick and broke, the first thing they care about is just themselves. I gotta get myself right before I can help anyone else or care about anyone else. That's how most people are. It's like a survival human instinct. Okay, so we have gotta talk in terms of their interest. So for example, I'm here today on the Gold Coast, if I'm talking to someone that might wanna be a big business owner or even a B, and he loves surfing, he wants to be out there surfing every day, but he's stuck in an office. 
I'm gonna say, look, mate, um, you know, connect with him like I normally would. So I'm not just straight pitching. Hey, 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 mate, how you been? How's the surf been? What have you been up to? How's work? How's the family? Cool. Mate, the reason I wanna to talk to you is I've got an opportunity for you. I found a business model. Um, you're gonna be very interested in it because you're already into health, you're into that industry, and you're already quite a good sales guy. And you know, people have a lot of respect for you, you could do really well. I've got an opportunity for you where you can actually work from home, work for yourself, so when the waves are six foot clean, you can go out and ride them. You don't have to be in answering to your boss. And this, this business can provide you the lifestyle that you want to be truly happy. So we should sit down and have a, have a chat. It'd be really good to catch up with you anyway. And if you want to do what we call a soft lockdown and get more meetings, I could finish with, look mate, it might not be for you, but we should catch up anyway. I'll show you it, see what you think. It'd be great to catch up anyway. So that's what I call the add-on, is like the soft lockdown. If you're struggling for meetings and you want to get people through the door, that's how I can get a lot more people in. But obviously if you're dealing with hundreds of leads and thousands of people, um, and you've got online marketing and everything's coming in, you don't need to do that. You're sorting. You're like selecting process, you know. Have you got five to ten hours a week to, to do the business? Okay, no? Okay, won't be for you. Next. Okay, so we're all in different positions. We've all got a different size list. We've all got a different network. But the main thing is, what's in it for me? So part one is really great, as you normally would. Share what's in it for me and a soft lockdown. Okay, so and if it was for a customer, it could be something simple like, hey John, how you going, how's your training been? Look, I wanna to talk to you about this health company, something I'm really passionate about, we focus on, you can even touch on your why, and sort of say something along the lines of, we really focus on cleansing and alkalizing your body, getting it back in balance, something I'm super passionate about. I know it's gonna help you with your energy and your weight or whatever problem they might be having. We'd love to catch up for you and catch up with you and show you all about it. What time are you free this week? It'd be great to catch up. Where are you working at the moment? Oh Miami, I'm there every day. I'm around there three, how does three work? And we lock down the meeting. Okay, so it's a really simple process. The number one rule for invite is do not hose them down with too much information. Or as Pete says, don't spew on them <laughs> with too much information. We only want to give enough information to get them in for a meeting. Because our presentation is powerful. We've got a great presentation where it's very educational, um, <laughs> provides so much value, and really shows that there's no risk and, and all those things. So once we get them here, our, our numbers are great. We've just got to get through the invite. Don't tell too much. Worst mistake people make, especially amateurs, come in and they tell all their friends too much when they don't even know what they're talking about yet. And that's, they've given the industry a bad name. Okay, so you've got to be very smart, almost very tactful, and almost build your case. And yes, you're going to have that friend where you don't even need to invite. It'll just be, it'll just be like, Pete, just started this new business. Come around for a beer. I want to show you about it. All about it. You know, that will be some people's invites. Now, that's the perfect one. This is a little harder. Okay? And when I'm talking to random people on the street in Facebook, it generally runs in that same system. Build rapport if I don't know them, what do you do? Find out about them, be interested, not interesting. Share what's in it for them and have a soft lockdown. You know, it's the same principles apply, whether it's a warm market, cold market, internet, in person. The same flow seems to have success if you don't talk too much. And really you don't want them going onto the company website because they're not going to read it properly, it's too big. You don't want them looking over the website because they're just going to say, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen all this stuff before, no, not interested. You know, so the human sell, websites, billboards, advertisement, radio, they don't sell anymore. People are very resistant to them, it doesn't work, it's outdated, and that's why this industry is, you know, tipped tip to doubling growth over the next few years. Because people to people selling is the future. People buy off people they like. People buy off people they trust. They don't buy off websites. They buy off your why and your presentation. Okay, and your ex explanation. So inviting should be very simple. Um, one thing to know about the invite is it's going to take probably four to eight times, potentially, to get them started. So you might have to invite once, they won't be interested. Now that doesn't mean you invite them every week and spam them until they come to a meeting or they tell you to take a hike. Build a relationship, touch base with them, not even about the business for the next couple of times, and then still doing this business. Because most people will take you doing it for a couple of months to believe because we're all into gimmick things. We all try a diet for a week, we try a gym for a week, we get a personal trainer for a week, all these things, and we've all got a million business ideas, but no one follows through with anything in life. So that's why people are resistant at invite number one. It will normally take four to eight points of contact to really lock them in. 
And it might not be from you. They might hear about it from Bob, John, Dylan, and then you, bottom. Okay, I'll come and hear about it. So that's why you need to continue to follow up because this is going so fast and people are learning about the power of this business, the power of the products, someone else will get them. Okay, so we've got to be professional, act like a business, like any sales or any other business in the world. Okay, it's the same principles in this. Okay, so now we want to get them into a presentation. So in a presentation, there's multiple ways we can present. We can present one on one, at a cafe, at an office, whatever it may be, or even one on two. So you can bring in, if you're just getting started, you probably don't want to present to one of your good contacts yet. You want to bring in the experienced person and have a two on one meeting. So in person is a way. Is a way. You've also got your city presentation. So every city, if they're well established, will have a city presentation every week where the top reps from that city present the products in the business. This is very, very effective as well. Okay? We also have webinars. Excuse my writing, it's definitely not my, uh, not my strength, but basically you've got four options thereabouts. Okay, you've got your one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two meetings in person, you've got your big city presentations in person, you've got your webinars, and then you've got Skype or phone. Okay, so you can call someone and run someone through the PowerPoint presentation over the phone. Send them the email of the PDF or the PowerPoint, they get it up and you talk them through it and have a conversation, same on Skype. Which one is most effective? I would, um, I would say none, <laughs> really. It's gonna take four to eight points of contact to really get them started. So really, all these four are just one of the four to eight steps. Realistically, to get someone in, and signing someone up doesn't mean you've signed them up. They're not in until they're in, until they've decided. Okay, so anyone can sign them up. I can meet someone, use all the sales techniques, probably close them, and you know, but they'll probably never do anything again. And I'm not after you know, 60, 70 bucks for a once-off sale. It doesn't really interest me. And that's why no one, if anyone was into that, they wouldn't be doing this business. They'd be working at the local retail shop. Okay, so we're a bit different. So what you want to do is utilize them all. You might have a meeting with someone one-on-one -on -one at first. Just drip feed information. Don't, don't blurt out too much and bombard them with every fact and figure under the sun. And then you might bring them the next week to the city presentation. Now the city presentation's great because they get the social proof. They get to see one of the top speakers. They get to see 40, 50, 100, 200 people, whatever size the city is at that time. They get to meet everyone, see the culture. But the one-on-one's effective because you get that one-on-one -on -one communication, question and answers, and you can really find out their problems and solutions. And then they might not sign up straight away here. It then might take getting them onto a webinar. They pick up another few things they miss because there's no way you can see a presentation once and remember everything. You know, a genius couldn't do it. They still might not be in. So then we get them on Skype or on the phone, we might even take them through a basic training like this, and now they get started. But most people quit here if they don't sign up. Well, actually, most people don't even get to here. Most people quit at the first invite where they don't come and sign up. Oh, it doesn't work. I've got no friends left, you know. I've, I've exhausted my warm list. You know, all these things, you know. And someone like Peter's been great who's come to a new city with not one contact and is now one of the top He's been in the top three or four earners in Australia, you know, the last few weeks. So that's how, you know, you know, it takes, you can do it cold, you can do it warm if you apply these principles. Now, obviously, Pete found out because he built it cold, no one cold was going to sign up time one. They needed to build the relationship. So Pete worked the four to eight points of contact. And that's why he's been successful. So the same principles apply. And it might not just be the right time for some people. That's why, keep the contact. Doesn't mean you pitch and hound them eight times after they don't sign up, but it means you just drop it in every now and then, build the relationship, and when they see your success, they see you've been doing it for a long period of time, they see the results, they'll jump on board. So it's a process, it's like every business. No business booms overnight, okay? They've all got challenges, they all take time, they all take relationships, and this really should be called relationship marketing, and if you can really set your brain to see this as relationship marketing, it's gonna change the game for you and you're gonna have an advantage over everyone. But the interesting thing here, which going back to the four to eight points, so step number five is the follow-up. Okay, now we follow up no matter if they sign up or they don't sign up, we still follow up four to eight times. Unless they say straight out, no, this is not for me, 
don't want to hear about it again. And then cool, you leave them alone. You don't want to waste your time in that, in that area. But generally it'll take four to eight points of contact to sign them up. But if they do sign up, you still do the four to eight points of contact because there's two sign-ups you need to make. The time that they sign up and the time that they decide. Two very different <laughs> periods in someone's business because hundreds of people sign up, only tens of people decide. And the reason only tens of people decide is most people stop here. They stop, they don't follow up. They send them a link to the basic training and say, oh yeah, yeah, go train yourself and um, good luck with it. Unfortunately in this industry, it takes a little bit more work. It's like every other business in the world. Okay, it takes work, it takes the communication, it takes the support. So after someone signs up, you want to take four to eight points of contact. You want to get them through one-on-one, city presentation, webinars, Skypes, trainings, provide them education, get them reading the right books, all those things. And then that's when they'll start to decide. So that's part of your follow-up. Part of your follow-up for those that don't sign up is you're going to be able to handle objections. And when handling objections, you're going to get three types of people. You're going to get skeptics, cynics, and people that are open. Okay, so the skeptics are actually good. They've got legitimate questions. And they might come across as negative at first, but if they're legitimate questions, these are actually sometimes the best people. They want to figure out all the problems they see, so they can do it. They're trying to figure out, how can I make this work? I need to find out what's, what happens here, 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 so I can see how this thing works. What's niche about these products? Or why is this better than anything on the shelf? Some people get very defensive about that. That's a great question. It means they're thinking, okay, well, how do I sell this stuff? Or why am I going to buy it? So these are actually good things. Skeptics are great. So we want to spend a bit of time on cynics, help them through the objections, show them the information, educate them, get them through the four to eight points of contact. And if they sign up, they'll be probably some of your better reps. Some of the best reps we've got have been the biggest skeptics for a whole 12 months and then joined, joined up and they're, you know, they're flying. This happens, okay? Cynics, on the other hand, you don't want to get you caught wasting time on ignorant people that are, they're, they're, without doing it, they're like two-year-olds. You know, they won't listen no matter what you can show them. Ah, la, 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 la. They're not going to listen to a thing you say. They've made up their mind no matter what evidence is given to them. Because they're negative, they're fearful, they're scared. They see false evidence appearing real. Whatever it may be. They're stuck in that negative mindset. We don't want to waste our time with these people. We don't want these people in your team. They're going to cause you more drama than you can imagine. Do not waste your energy with cynics. You don't want them. There's... Six billion people on this planet, a billion of them are on Facebook, you know, connected to the computer and the internet. You do not need to beg in this industry if you're building a list and inviting regularly. So you don't want to work with these people. It's like, cool, cool, not for everyone, obviously not for you. Did you have a bad experience in the past? Whatever it may be, okay? And then the open ones are people like myself that, you know, I've got the problem where I buy too much and say yes to everything. I'm like the easiest sale in the world. I buy into a clothes store, car shop, I buy everything. I buy bids, I get into businesses I shouldn't um, just because I don't have time, but I can't say no because I'm open to everything. Okay, these are the easier ones. <laughs> but the open ones can be just as quickly onto the next thing as well. So we've got to be careful. But they're the three types we really want to work with and spend that energy here because spending your energy here is going to get you down, it's going to get you upset, and you cannot be afraid of the opinions of negative people because people are negative about. Everything. <laughs> Doesn't matter whether you want to go join the army, become a PT, they'll give you 110 reasons why it can't work and why it's bad, why it's stupid, and they're stuck in their own paradigm. And normally, the cynics are always broke. They're always broke, unsuccessful, miserable people. I've never seen a super successful people person be super negative. Why? They're too busy being successful. They're too busy winning. They're too optimistic. They don't have a dark opinion of the world. So it's funny to see, look at that pattern. The cynics and the real negative people are generally people that are struggling, generally. And they're negative about everything and that's why they're probably where they are. Okay, so don't get too affected by them. It's just a sorting game. It's like an elite football team doesn't want the person that can't play. <laughs> why are you gonna spend, you know, the you know, NBA team, the Miami Heat, aren't gonna spend 12 months trying to recruit and train someone that can't play basketball. It's wasted energy. But if they've got someone like Odom who's injured but he's good and they want to develop him, you know, it's worth their investment. Same sort of thing in this business. You don't want everyone. This is a selection process because only someone that's willing to work hard can make it big in this industry. It's like every other business in the world. People looking for a free ride, you've got to set them straight, straight away. Categorize them A, B, C and let them know what's involved with being an A. 
And A will require two to four years, probably 10 hours a week. And you can give yourself a chance of being successful. And as Randy Gage says, why two to four years? Because it takes that long for your mindset to develop to the level it needs to be to be a millionaire. And it takes you two years to get the mindset of this game. Because this game is very different to sales. It's very different to business. This relationship where we're all independent reps and it's not a boss um, arrangement it's a very interesting dynamic and most people haven't experienced it before. So it takes time to figure it out. Okay, B's, and this will create a lot of clarity into business. Just say B's are people that aren't gonna to come to meetings, they're not gonna to commit to a system, they're gonna see how it goes, but they're gonna tell everyone about the products, they'll make as much money as they can. Some of them will be highly successful and make you know, a couple of grand a month, some will make you know, a couple of hundred. It's, it's whatever that person wants to do, that's cool. And then a C is obviously a customer, but the great thing is letting them know they can shift will provide a lot less negativity, a lot less pressure and skepticism. And when you actually give them the option and you're not trying to close their, close their ass to an A and you give them the choice, it's amazing how many people say, oh, I wanna be an A. It's like the reverse psychology. It's like you tell someone to do something, they don't wanna do it, you know, just cause you said not to, you know? So let them choose. And that's pretty much all I wanna say in the follow up, just keep the relationship. Never burn a bridge was probably the best thing I did in my business. Because the best couple of people in my business today are people that were very negative at the start and I could have very easily burnt the bridge with some of the things that were said. Never burn the bridge. Because the, the last person you think that will ever jump back on could just happen to be the best rep you've ever had. And you won't believe it now, but you'll believe it when you experience it. <laughs> but take my word for it. And then lastly, once people are comfortable in this, so I miss this, they need to be comfortable presenting themselves eventually. But you can get started in the business without presenting because you just bring them into your upline for the meeting, you bring them to a city presentation, you bring them to a webinar, or you, know, you send them a you know, Skype presentation, just talk them through it. So there's so many options to get started straight away, but you do want to be able to present the slides at some point. It's going to help your influence, it's going to help your understanding, it's going to make you a better speaker. You're going to learn so many skills being able to do it. So we do recommend learning how to present. And even if there are videos available, um, we still want to be able to present because it gives you, you become an expert in your field. Okay, so don't overthink presenting. Most people put too much pressure on themselves. Um, you just need a core message, a key point that you want to get across for each slide and talk with a purpose behind each slide and you'll be right. Just reading information is terrible. Okay, so that's all I'll say on that. We'll do a more advanced presenta presentation training later down the road. And then lastly, if anyone's an A, they need to know exactly what the system is. And the system is so simple. They've got an org meeting every week and the city presentation. That's all. That's all the ultimate commitment is for an A. They need to come to the org meeting every week. Org meeting, connect, mastermind meeting, whatever you want to call it. They need to be there every week. <laughs> Just like every successful business in the world has a staff meeting or a board, you know, board members meeting. It's the exact same thing. Business cannot operate without it. You'd be running, running a kamikaze business. People just going everywhere, nothing's tracked, and it will fall apart. The other thing I will tell you, it will fall apart without a city presentation. Okay, this is the glue. And without it, this, a city presentation, a lot of people are like, oh, but we're heading online now, no one wants to go to an in-person meeting. It might be true, they might not want to, but its effectiveness is twice as much because we are living in a virtual online world that the, the in-person methods are becoming twice as effective because we're losing the human element and people connect with it now and it, it's so much more effective. So we need to create an energy for both of these where it's like a winning sporting team. We all want to come to the city presentation to see everyone because we're a winning team, okay? Get to see all the friends and people on the same journey. You know, that's when you've got a great culture and that's when this thing can fly. When everyone wants to go there and they will not miss the city presentation because they want to see everyone, just like they go to the pub every Saturday night or the sporting training or whatever it may be, that's when you've got the magic dust in this business and you can fly. And it's the same with an org meeting. It needs to be productive. You need to assess the week before so people hold each other accountable. Not many people set goals at all. And by setting goals and having tracking, your, your chances of having, becoming successful times by about 100. Okay, so we really need to have an org meeting where we assess the week before, plan the week ahead. And what do we plan? We plan all this stuff. We plan the presentation, where they are, who's got one-on-ones, who's got people that need training, the events coming up, all that sort of stuff. And then at the end of it, you can do a bit of skill training, leadership training, whatever you need. But that's how simple this business really is. Everyone has to come in, you develop them a customer and rep why, 
They'll constantly work on it over time. They're constantly building their list and categorizing them as an A, B, or C. They're constantly inviting and bringing people into this funnel. We're all following up four to eight times, bringing the A's into the system, but still looking after the B's and C's and touching base with them once a week, make sure they're okay, any questions, and this is the recipe for a booming business. So it's really simple, six steps, just cycles through, everyone comes through, does the same, and if you just sort through enough people, don't get caught in negativity or the no's, you know, some will, some won't, who cares, so what, keep moving forward. We're only looking for people who want what we can offer. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's pretty much all I wanted to go through today, just give you a quick overview on how simple this business is, because once you can show people in your team how simple and create that clarity, clarity creates certainty, certainty creates action, and that certainty and action create results. And if we can duplicate this clarity and certainty down your generations, your business will keep multiplying. But if this gets weaker, three or four generations down, your business will start to hit a plateau. Okay, so we need to become confident in A, all this information for ourselves, and then we need to B, be able to do this for people. And you can send people to this video, of course, but it's more effective in person. You cannot beat the human element. And if for you guys that are tapping into the online world, this phone call and the human element becomes twice as important. And people think they can just go online, make money, just you know, set up a website, never speak to one person, and get rich overnight. You know, very difficult to do. You need to be in the industry for 10 years, build you know, hundreds of videos on your site where it's, it you know, creates that same volume of a human connection. But that's all I wanted to go through today, guys. Um, any questions before we conclude? No, you've done really well. You cleared a lot up for me today. <clears throat> a lot. Thank you yep. very much. Brilliant. Yeah. Does that give you just a little bit of clarity? You know, we've got the full PowerPoint, which is more in depth, but I do like to do it on the whiteboard just to show how simple it is. And eventually, you'll just know these six steps and process off your head. And when you do a phone call with someone in your team, you'll just be able to have that flow chart in the, the mind map going through it. And you'll be like, okay, so who has your list going? Who you got on it? Are, who are your A, B's and C's? Let me help you with the invite. Maybe if you tried this, if you tried that, cool how your presentation's going. Have you been bringing them here, here, here? Try that. How's your follow-up doing? What have you been doing? Okay, and how's the system going? And to be honest, you need to sell people on a system. You need to sell people on a follow-up because just by telling people, oh, you need to follow up and you need to go to a system, people don't listen. They need to know why. They won't take, <laughs> they won't do anything without the why. So you need to sell the, the fortune in network marketing in all business today is in the follow-up. You cannot be successful without following up and building relationships. But if you do follow up long enough and you build them, you're going to get them in for life and that's the type of business partner you want on board. Same with the customers. And you're gonna sell a system because people aren't gonna get off their chair and get off their favorite TV program to come to a meeting without a why. Okay, this, is, this city presentation has built a $100 billion industry. It works. <laughs> Best we follow a $100 billion industry. When we reach $100 billion as a company and as, a, as an individual team, and we've hit a lid, then we'll look for some innovations. But till then, let's just stick to this, <laughs> you know? And uh, same with the org meeting. It's just like, do you, can you tell me one successful business in the world that doesn't have an org meeting or a, a subscription? No? Okay, then why do you think you can run a million dollar business without it? Blank look. Okay, so these are all things you're gonna have to do. So you're gonna always be selling. You're gonna sell people why they need a list, why they need a follow-up, why they need to learn to present. And that's when you can really become more effective and really follow up. But the magic is in this business is the relationship. Those four to eight points of contact with your A's. You need an inner circle of five A's that are all committed. They see the vision, they're best, they're the united vision. You're on the same team and you've both got the same long-term vision and that's when the magic can happen. If you've got, a, you've got like a brotherhood <laughs> or sisterhood, um, you know, that's it's the most powerful formula in the world. You want to get hundreds of B's. They're easy, they don't have to commit much. Virtually get a free business, make great money, great products. They're easy, they'll always cycle in. But you've got to look after them and you've got to look after your customers too. If you look after your customers with four to eight points of contact, provide education, support, you'll have customers for life. You just sign them up once and never talk to them again, you'll probably never hear from them again. Same thing, so the fortune is in the follow-up. Okay, so that's all for today, guys. Thanks for joining us, hope you guys got a lot out of it. And um, we can go into more depth um, with any of these areas afterwards. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Hopefully that worked. <laughs>